Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog or channel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, thanks for coming back. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for everyone that's been subscribing to the channel. We got over 400 uh, subscribers finally. So I'm kind of excited about that. And hopefully we can keep it going. I wanted to just take some time to help cover a few things, you know, with, with trading that I've seen traders uh, make mistakes on and things I've learned over the last couple of years. And this might hopefully help uh, some of those that are struggling with uh, with trading or at least some trading advice. And I guess my background in trading, I mean, obviously I've been trading, but also I've seen, you know, over well over a thousand traders join Pineapple Stocks uh, come and go, right? Over a thousand. And that in itself has taught me what people are doing wrong and how they're losing money. So, you know, for me to learn that and understand where traders are actually making mistakes almost benefits myself by understanding that information and then utilizing uh, that to not make those same mistakes. And probably the biggest thing, and, I, and you know, everyone says these things, but it's a little bit harder to actually demonstrate this is, um, is, is it's that the sizing is, is the biggest, one of the biggest issues I always see. Uh, traders come in with an account with $20,000 or um, $30,000, let's say, and they wanna make $100,000 uh, for the year. And I think it's, uh, it's, far, it's, it's very difficult to go about doing that, especially if you haven't done it in the past. Uh, and I think, you know, there should only be a daily goal set and, you know, or a weekly goal set uh, rather than trying to set a very large, you know, big long-term goal. Because what you need to do is you got to take the small wins and, and really a daily goal comes out to the five trades or the two trades or even that single trade you made in the day. So you have to break it down for every single trade. And within each trade, you gotta take the profit when you get it and cut the loss when you see it. And you gotta, you gotta manage that in itself. Uh, otherwise, if you're trying to go for you know, a large $10,000 trade you know, with a $20,000 or $30,000 account, the chance of that happening is very rare. Even, even when I've been trading, uh, the chance of me you know, buying, let's say some uh, stock and you know, buying $30,000 in it, for it to go up ten thousand dollars, I'm probably holding that for a large swing trade for a month for me to get that ten thousand dollar gain, and that's a thirty percent gain that the stock's making over whatever, like like a, a three or four week period when it's on an uptrend, and those are large swing trades. But trying to make this in a single day is just near impossible unless you're playing earnings, and at that point you're you're somewhat gambling on earnings. Uh, so I, I think traders make a mistake on. Uh, understanding how much profit they could actually make from their account size, and then also uh, not positioning right. And what ends up happening when you don't position right is that you take too much risk for your account size, and then you get you may you may win five out of ten times, you know five out of six times, or four out of five times. You know eighty percent of the time you may win, you know, but that one time uh, you end up losing and it wipes the entire account off. So I, I think the sizing is the biggest issue. Uh, personally, what I do with sizing is I only take 3% to 5% of the total account balance on a, on a single trade. And that is in options that I'm referring to. Uh, in terms of equity, when I'm buying equity, actual stock, you know, I could buy up to 15 to 20% of the account uh, and be okay with that. But a lot of times that is a quick, you know, hold for me, it's either a swing or a day trade. And then also I'm not buying that much on an earning. So I'm not holding it through earnings either. So that's something to note as well. If you're buying uh, stock when it's going through earnings and you're only buying for earnings, uh, make sure you position right because sometimes stocks can go up or down 20, 30%. And then you have a large chunk missing from your account. Uh, but in, in, you know, at the end of the day, that's not the way I play uh, the market. I'm a big believer in selling the premium. So I sell options more than I buy options. So I'm selling premium to those who want to purchase options from me. And for me, you know, I'm essentially becoming the insurance company or the banker uh, in a sense or the casino, you can say, rather than being the player. And that's, that's what options really is, is that it's an insurance hedge against equity. And that's the primary reason why options were created 
and used is because it's, you know, that's why they call it premium. I mean, just think that through a little bit. I mean, that's why it's called premium is because you pay premium on that contract and that contract should be used to hedge equity that you actually own. So it's really insurance contracts that you're buying at the end of the day, at least in my point of view. Uh, and think about it. How many times do you actually get paid out on your insurance? Life insurance, once. Auto insurance, very rare for you to get in car accidents, homeowners insurance, right? Like all these insurance companies, they obviously make money and that's what they're doing. You're paying a premium for your car insurance and you're getting security for that in, in return. But uh, that's only, you know, this only works if you own equity. So I buy options, to, you know, don't get me wrong. I buy options when I'm trying to uh, essentially leverage a direction, but I tend to try to teach folks and talk to folks about actually selling premium. And that's more consistent in my opinion than it is to actually buy, um, buy options. And one, one strategy that I like to do is a lot is sell puts. So I'm selling a contract to essentially say this stock won't go to a certain price. So let's say it's Netflix and earnings are coming up for Netflix. I'm going to sell premium, let's say at $460 a put, and I'm gonna get paid a certain amount to take on that risk as the insurance company, and I'm getting paid premium from the buyer of this option contract. I'm actually getting paid at the end of the day, if you think about it, to own the stock at $460. If the stock ever gets there, I'll have to own the shares, but at the end of the day, I got paid to own shares. So if you're gonna buy Netflix at $530 right now, instead you could just short, uh, you could just sell naked puts on Netflix. If you're gonna buy 100 shares, you'd rather just sell the $530 put because you're gonna get the shares at a discount at that point if it goes below 530, and especially if you wanna become a holder in the company. So selling puts on solid companies is an a simple method to get really decent returns, you know, not thousand percent returns on these gamble lotto options, but you know, you're going to get like, you know, some percent of return, whatever it may be, uh, depending on the strike and where the stock's at and the volatility, you're going to get some premium and you can keep collecting that forever. So I actually probably have a video. I think it's called like how to get paid to buy options, or I'm sorry, how to get paid to own, own stock. I think it might be a blog as well. So you can go to pineapplestocks.com to, to check it out. I don't wanna to take too long in this video. So let's just go through and run through some earnings. I'm only gonna cover two of them in here because I don't want this video to get too long. I'll make another video on uh, Tesla, Chipotle, and American Airlines. I'll just, collect, I'll just cover Netflix and Snapchat and then IBM right now. So Netflix has earnings coming up. I'm looking at my laptop, that's one. I'm uh, kind of staring down here. But uh, what I'm looking at is really the stock is more than likely, the, the, the stock itself has been doing well and it's holding a certain level. It's been kind of range bound between, you know, 480s to $600 was the peak, almost $600 was the, was the peak it looks like. It was like 570 or so, 580 was the peak. So I think uh, Netflix in itself was probably gonna be range bound uh, on this earnings, but I do believe the company is doing really well. Uh, you can see we have Netflix on back there. And I think because of COVID, a lot of people are uh, continuing to subscribe to Netflix and it's essentially become a lifeline uh, during this you know, epidemic or pandemic, whatever you wanna call it, uh, with, with COVID going on. So I think they're doing really well, even if they were to raise prices, uh, I think that would probably be a good idea for them to raise the prices. And I doubt anybody would unsubscribe. Uh, especially with the climate right now. And then their content strategies are getting better. Original content's doing really well. And then also they're buying new content as well, which is doing, uh, I think, doing good in terms of engagement rates uh, against their users. So uh, I'm personally probably gonna be selling naked puts, probably at 460, 470. You can see on the blog post that there is, uh, there is some support there. So I'll probably sell some puts. And then I possibly might buy a long-term option in it as well. Uh, next up, Snapchat. So I think Snapchat against you know versus TikTok is probably the biggest headline that you can think of. Uh, you know, TikTok is obviously gaining steam over Snapchat, uh, but Snapchat stock uh, has done exceptionally well over the last couple of months. I'd say uh, I don't know if the users are growing. Uh, 
I haven't read you know too much about it and I, I don't know too much about Snapchat in terms of performance, uh, like user engagement rates and things of that sort. Uh, just looking at the chart though, I think Snapchat might uh, be a good play in terms of taking a strangle. So it means you're gonna buy both sides, uh, buy a call and a put, and you can buy them out of the money and hopefully it has, which historically does have a large move, uh, which one side is what you wanna win, either the upside or the downside. You just need it to make a large move. So uh, I'm, perf I'm preferring to go for a short strangle on the, num uh, on the company. I do own shares, a uh, small amount, but I purchased those when COVID hit and I purchased them like at $11, I think. So obviously I'm up like 150% on the shares. Uh, I'm gonna continue holding the shares because the position is really small. And then the next stock was IBM that we we're going to cover here. So IBM is a dinosaur. It's an old company. Uh, I never really liked IBM uh, in general. Um, and I think that the if you look at the charts and the stock itself, I mean, they've been range bound for probably forever. Like they, it's just been always stuck in a certain range. And it seems like right now it's stuck between $116 and $136. So I think it's going to stick around that. I think it stopped trading around on Friday, around like $125 or so. Let me see, $126. So uh, $126 is where it stopped at on Friday. I think it's gonna continue staying range bound. Uh, in this type of situation, an iron condor uh, would be really good or what they call iron butterfly, or you could do a short strangle. So there's three different plays to take. Uh, the least risk is going to be an iron butterfly, but you need to pin it somewhere. So it needs to pin at $125 or $130 or $120. You could even open up multiple iron butterflies if you wanted to. Uh, but I think here the safest bet is probably to open a naked put and just get paid premium. Uh, but you can also open an iron condor and be pretty safe on IBM. It doesn't move a lot. I think the move, the implied move is probably about three to 4%. An implied move, the meaning of that is, what do the options price the move at? So if you were gonna buy a $126 call, what is the price you're gonna pay? Like it's gonna be like $6 or something, let's say for the call. And that percentage and the downside percentage, you know, that's, that's the implied move that the stock is gonna have. And the options writers are essentially gonna, you know, they're, they're the ones calculating the price of the premium contract. And that tells you what the implied move is. So that's what they're predicting is going to move. That's essentially like the Vegas lines, right? Like the bears against the Colts, you know, the line is minus six because the, you know, the bookies, the bookmakers are thinking uh, they're going to be right at $6 or so. So that's how options contracts work. And that's how implied volatility factors into the whole equation. All right, so those were the stocks. I have three more, Tesla, Coca-Cola, and then I got the third one I had, American Airlines, uh, and then also Chipotle. So I, I need to cover those uh, probably on the next video. This is already getting to almost 14 minutes. So we'll cover those next time. Uh, hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up, uh, like it, and then share um, the video as well. Uh, and if you guys can subscribe to the channel, once again, uh, that would be fabulous as well. I'm trying to grow it. We have 407 subscribers right now. I need to get over a thousand to start having uh, YouTube pay me for this time that I'm spending on this. Not that I wouldn't do it for free to grow uh, the pineapple name anyways, but still, I want to try to grow a subscriber base and share this education with everyone. So, all right, guys, thanks a lot. Have a great day.